Welcome back to Top 5 Auto Repairs. How do you know you have air in your brake system? And it's time to bleed it. Since air is compressible, hydraulic pressure from the master cylinder will not transfer from the master cylinder straight to the uh, brake caliper or wheel cylinder. As a result, due to hydraulic pressure not being 100% transferred from the master cylinder to the uh, brake caliper, this will cause the brake pad to not fully rub against this rotor when this piston on the caliper extends. As a result, driver's gonna notice spongy brake will step in the brake pedal. Driver's gonna notice the brake pedal sinking a little bit more than usual. Driver's gonna notice that the driver needs to step on the brake pedal a few times to come to a stop. And driver may also notice longer braking distance. These are all classic signs that there is air in the brake system and it's time to bleed it. At this point, you're probably wondering why there's air in the brake system and how did it get in there? And I wanted to tell you guys a few reason why. The first common reason is maybe you had a component change somewhere in the brake system. For example, maybe you changed the brake caliper, maybe you had the wheel cylinder replaced, maybe you had the ABS pump replaced, maybe you had the brake booster replaced and you had to remove the master cylinder, or you had the master cylinder replaced because maybe the brake pedal was sticking to the floor, or maybe you had your brake hose replaced, and so on. For example, when you're changing a brake caliper, it is important to pitch off the brake line with one of these tools. Next, what you want to do is you want to hang the caliper with a, with a caliper hanger as high as possible because if the brake line is sinking lower, you're going to lose a lot of brake fluid and that's going to cause more air to get into the system. So the higher you raise the brake line and you pinch off the brake line, less the air will get into the brake system when you're changing the caliper. The next common reason is going to be there's a leak somewhere in your brake system. For example, you could have a leaky brake caliper, you could have a leaky wheel cylinder, you could have bad brake hoses, a line that are cracked, and so on. So I've been doing this for a very long time, and the number one reason why there's a leak in your brake system is going to be caused by low brake pads or very low brake shoe friction lining. When the materials on the brake pad becomes extremely low or on the brake shoe, this is going to cause this piston right here to extend all the way outward. When it extends all the way outward, this piston can start to move around going sideways and this will definitely cause the piston, the, the sill, to break and therefore causing a major leak. Or maybe the caliper is seized and when you're trying to compress it and the piston won't move, maybe there's a lot of rust built up on the inside of the caliper. If there's a lot of rust built up inside the caliper when you lift up this dust boot, Maybe the sill might also be worn. When the sill becomes worn, again, that will contribute to a leak causing air to go inside the brake system. Another reason why there's air in the system, maybe it's because there's air in the master cylinder. For example, let's just say you have a major leak and suddenly there's no more fluid in the master cylinder. Definitely this will cause air to be trapped in the master cylinder. Or you had the master cylinder replaced and the master cylinder must be bench bleed before installing the master cylinder. If you had a component replaced such as the wheel cylinder or brake caliper and let's just say the master cylinder runs dry and there's no more brake fluid in the reservoir and after when you install this new component such as the brake caliper or wheel cylinder and let's just say you're bleeding the brake fluid air and let's just say you kept on bleeding it, bleeding it for 20, 30 minutes, one hour or so and you realize that you're making no progress, that's because air is trapped in the master cylinder. At this point, maybe you need to remove the master cylinder and bench bleed it and install it and then bleed the brake system for air. Another common reason is maybe air is trapped in the ABS pump. For example, if you're installing the ABS pump, one thing I like to do is leave out one line loose and then when I'm filling up the uh, master cylinder with brake fluid, a little bit of air will come out of here and the brake fluid will start to run out. When brake fluid starts to run out and there's no more air, then I will tighten up this line. And then that's how I know the ABS pump is maybe 80 or 90% bled for air. If that doesn't work, maybe you need a special scan tool to bleed the um, ABS pump. When you're bleeding the brake system for air, I always start from the wheel farthest away from the master cylinder and work your way all the way to the wheel closest to the master cylinder. And the next reason why there's air in your brake system, maybe air got into your brake system during a brake pad or brake shoe replacement. For example, let's just say you have this 
caliper right here and it is dual piston. Let's just say you are compressing this piston over here and let's just say you did not compress the other side. Let's just say you decide to compress this one all the way in. When you decide to compress one side all the way in and you don't compress it evenly, like you compress this one a little bit, this one a little bit, and this one a little bit, and this one a little bit, this can cause the, uh, the, uh, the piston seal to break. So every time you are compressing this, I always compress one side and then compress the other side slowly, and compress this side slowly, compress this side slowly, or you can get two of these two and compress each side slowly at a time. Or let's just say you had your brake shoe replaced, and this happened pretty often. Every time you change your brake shoe, I realized that maybe about 20% of the time, this wheel cylinder still always end up leaking. So if it, if it ends up leaking, you must change that wheel cylinder. And if this a piston end up leaking as well, you must also change this brake caliper. At this point, you're probably wondering how to bleed the brake system for air. It's very simple. There are going to be a few materials that you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is just a regular water bottle. You're going to make a hole on the top. You're going to need some sort of tube, which you get at the auto parts store. And you want to get a one-way check valve. Once you got that set, next thing you want to do is locate the bleeder valve on a brake caliper or wheel cylinder. And if it's extremely rusted, make sure you spray penetrating oil such as PB Blaster or W40. The next thing you want to do is you want to get yourself a wrench or a line wrench. And you want to place it on this bleeder valve. Next, connect this tubing onto the uh, bleeder valve. Once you got that done, make sure you add brake fluid until this whole entire tubing sits inside the brake fluid. Next thing you want to do, you want to have somebody pump the um, brakes for about 5 to 10 times and have them hold on to the brake pedal. After they hold on to the brake pedal, you can crack the uh, brake uh, valve open and you're going to see air coming out of the uh, brake tube. You want to keep bleeding the brake system until there's no more air in the brake system until you see nice and clear brake fluid coming out of this tube. In addition, make sure you keep an eye on that master cylinder. Make sure the reservoir never run dry. If it run dry and air end up in your master cylinder, then you're going to have to bench bleed the master cylinder as well. What if you're by yourself and nobody can help you pump that brakes? Well, you can do it yourself. All you need is maybe like uh, some sort of tool. You can use a club, you can use a long ratchet, you can use a pipe, a 2x4, anything really. Next thing you want to do is you want to pump the brakes about 5 to 10 times, place this object on the brake pedal, and have this push against the seat. So what you can do is you can adjust the seat and push against this part over here and have it pressed down onto the brake pedal. So that's how you can pump the brakes by yourself. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thank you for watching and subscribe to Top 5 Auto Repairs.